Greetings, Earthlings. Well, we've been through all the uh, repair for about six episodes. <laughs> and if you haven't seen the repair, this is the Keith Lee 171, by the way, multimeter. Um, if you haven't been through those repair videos, go back and watch them, I suppose. I was all set to um, show uh, a video of getting it into calibration. And so I went through and calibrated it, recorded all that, and all that's going to end up on the cutting room floor, as it were, in the big bucket, because there's some interesting behavior going on here. Um, I'm on the one volt scale. I'm putting one volt in. That's pretty good right there. 0.9999. Whoops. It's, you know, within one count. If I go to the 10 volt scale, um, and get, give it 10 volts in, it's within one count there. Um, so we'll go back to one, just to go back to one. There's there's one volt on the 10 volt scale. It's within a count or two. That's pretty good. Um, but here's the problem. If I reverse the leads and give it negative one volt in, I get minus 9933, and I cannot get it closer than that. It won't, that's that's at the end of the uh, uh, calibration. Adjustment. I even, as you may see here, and you see that, I even lifted the leg of a resistor here to try and get more range uh on the adjustment and no it's fully at the uh at the limit um you know even that didn't bring it into into spec on the negative side we could talk about this um voltage reference this is odd in that it has both a positive and a negative voltage reference um i i think most most meters most instruments would have a single reference and then derive the other one from that this has two separately adjustable ones which is odd um, but what's going on well right here is where the voltage comes into the integrator board the analog to digital converter uh, from all the other circuitry and when we're on the one volt scale, basically it should be coming straight through. So as you can see over there, we've got 1.0000 volts um, coming in. It goes through that resistor and it drops to 0 0.9707. Now that's really odd because Looking at the schematic, can you see the schematic? That's a 100 ohm resistor, according to the schematic. And uh, it's going into a FET. It's, you know, it's, it, there's nothing, there's nothing there that should be pulling the other side of that resistor down. Okay. There's 100 ohms there, but into 1 meg ohm, 1 meg ohm through there. Uh, there's a FET. You know, suppose that FET could be stuck on and that would have 392k ohms to ground. Um, but really, uh, there's something else going on here. Oh, and one thing. Okay, so what we can do is we can look at what the... Uh, is it there and there. Uh, the the voltage the calibration voltage okay the output of uh, well what I'm looking at is the high and low side of the uh, of that potentiometer and this is calibrated should be calibrated to exactly two volts so if I go there that's one side this is on the one that that has the problem, 2.01, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0
I don't know why it's bouncing like that. And here, 1.99, you can see that 2 volts is in the middle of those two. Okay? And yet, because of that drop right there uh, from 1 volt to 0.97 volts, or if we give it 2 volts in, this is minus 2 volts, here's the minus 2 volts minus 1.94. So that's what the voltage reference needs to be set to. Okay? That shouldn't be dropping that much. What's going on? Well, looking at that resistor in the schematic, it's 100 ohms. On the board, it's uh, 3.09K. 3.09K. And the, other, and the other two green resistors next to it here, which correspond to, I think, uh, this one. Let me see, I figure this out. 303, R303 and R304. Yeah, there's R303 and there's R304. Okay, and those are the wrong value as well. R303, which is the critical one, really, because that's going to be the one that forms the voltage divider. Originally it's one mega ohm. Here it's, uh, what, do you, what do we got? 140K and then 4.02K for, no, no, R303 is 4.02K. R304 is 140k. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh yeah, but but remember, uh, this had a had a 118k in it. So probably 118k and 140k gets you close to the 392k, which is what should have been there. Okay. So what's going on? Well, I think what we're looking at. I think that this board is an older revision. What the schematic shows is uh, revision F, and I'm thinking this is a revision D based on the, uh, the changes that I can see. They didn't really describe them all that well, but um, uh, there's enough there to, to make me think that this is just an older revision. And so what I need to do is, and we're back to did it ever work, you know, but, <laughs> I need to make this board completely match the schematic, okay? So that means replacing those three uh, resistors and checking everything else on the board because there may be other changes that, uh, that are in there as well that, uh, that I don't see that are causing it to not work properly. All right, and so I did um, go through that board. I changed three resistors. I also changed three capacitors. Uh, these are just bypass capacitors for the TTL chips that are there. Um, what it had was uh, these old ceramic discs, and I had some nicer ones. Uh, so these are CK06, mil spec. Uh, so I put those in there. Uh, well, I don't know if I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Uh, those are those are along here. Uh, so that was totally unnecessary. The uh, capacitors, but I just did it to do it. Uh, so I've got it powered back on, and we notice now it's not reading zero with zero in, and that's because we threw off the calibration by replacing. What was it? It was um, that resistor, that resistor, and uh, that resistor, I think. So um, the setting here of digital zero adjust, it, it will need to be adjusted. But let's put one volt in and see what happens. Oh, the other thing, um, the other difference, which I didn't address, is that um, these 
controls here, which is the uh, course adjust on the uh, reference for the reference voltage, uh, should be a 2K potentiometer. What's in there is a 1K. I think I'll be okay with a 1K. A 2K just allows this point here to go uh, higher. Uh, and so that would be a factor if you had a, a Zener diode that was on the low side um, of nominal. So these, uh, these Zeners are um, 1N938s. They're temperature compensated Zeners, so they're not particularly uh, accurate, the voltage. They're nominal 9 volts, but they could be from 8.55 to 9.45. Both of mine read over 9, which is why I think that I'll be okay leaving those at 1K. Um, but they are stable over temperature. And the other thing is these resistors are really oddball resistors. They are um, like 0.01%, but I think that the reason they use the ones that, are, that they used, um, yeah, 0.01%, uh, is they're probably real low um, temperature coefficient to, to, to keep it stable. So, so what you're doing here, what's, what's happening here, is that uh, we come in with a regulated uh, plus and minus 15 volts, bring that down to nominally 9 volts, um, and we can set the current through that uh, Zener. Um, it's uh, specified as most stable at 7.5 milliamps. Uh, so this allows you to set the current through it to get it to there and then we bring that voltage somewhere you know again like between 8.55 and 9.45 volts down to the 2 volt um, uh, reference voltage that we're using for the actual conversion okay so 1 volt in yeah it's way over okay that's actually a good sign uh, so now, what's the calibration procedure here? Well, yeah, the calibration procedure starts by using um, this, the divider here, and the, and the null meter. But I think that part's okay, because that's really setting the... Um, uh, analog amplifier. What we want to do now, oh, we'll go back. That resistor, the input, okay, so we've got one volt coming in, so I'm reading actually a little below one volt now this time on the one side, and a little high on the other side. Before I was reading uh, a little Slight, ever so slightly above on this side and below on this side. But anyway, you can see it is very close to one volt on both sides. So that's where we want it to be. And if I go to two volts, this will go to overflow. But um, two volts is really where we want to be setting 99985, 99996, yeah. Uh, really where the, uh, the reference voltage needs to be set. I mean, you don't set it by measuring it and setting it to 2 volts. You set it by putting, you know, a measured voltage in, which in this case is 1.999, and adjusting the meter to read 1.999. Hey, look at that. Okay. And now I can go to here. Because this was a very much, oops, it's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. Okay. I should put that sort of in the middle of its range, shouldn't I? I don't know where the middle of its range is. Okay, get it as close as I can with this. This needs to go up. Uh, 
Okay. And then we'll bring it right down to spot on. Okay. Right down to zero there. All right. That's with 1.999 volts. And then you're supposed to check it at one volt. Um, okay. And that's within one count, which is in spec. 0.5. And that's within one count, which is in spec, and point one should also be within one count. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Um, now the negative. That's what that. Whoops. One point nine nine. Well, let's just start with let's just start with one volt negative. I'm going to set that to one volt. Okay, it's positive one. And this is not the final calibration. Obviously, I'm going to have to go back through and um, uh, go through the, the the whole calibration procedure just to make sure everything's okay. Okay, this is how we adjust the uh, negative side. Now, let me see. It's this one and uh, I think uh, this one. So this is the course adjust. And this is the fine adjust. there there we go that's one volt we'll go to 999 where we're supposed to calibrate it 1.999 there minus 1.999 Minus 1.0, okay, plus or minus 1 count, yes. 0.5, minus 0.5, plus or minus 1 count, yes. Minus 0.1, plus or minus 1 count. Well, that's two counts. Yes, oh, uh, it, oh uh. <laughs> pretty close, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that this is now... Um, well, you know, we can call that repaired, but it's actually upgraded, okay? We've upgraded the uh, integrator board to the latest spec, or the spec anyway that's documented. All right, and there it is in its new home. Um, it's a permanent home. I'm declaring success here. Um, <laughs> it calibrated okay. Uh, down here, here's the final parts. Uh, um, count. Now, not all of these were uh, were bad. In fact, I mean, this one I'm going to save because uh, it's good and uh, it's one of those things that it's impossible to find. So um, I may have a use for it somewhere down the line. But power supply capacitors, the integrator capacitor. Um, so really only one of these capacitors was bad. This was the wrong value, but it's a perfectly good capacitor. I had two bad op amps, and they were bad. Um, I had one bad FET. I had one burned out light bulb. I had some carbon resistors that had drifted out of spec, and I had some, uh, these are not part of it. I don't know how they got in here. Uh, and I had some precision resistors that were just the wrong value, and then I went ahead and changed um, these capacitors, these are just, were just bypass capacitors for the digital circuitry. 
on one of the boards and uh, I put some nicer looking capacitors in there. There's nothing wrong with these as far as I know. So that's it. Um, yeah, I've got the, uh, it's actually, it's dialed in here re measuring resistance and um, I have a decade resistor box here, General Radio Genrad 1433P, which um, should be 0.01% accurate. Um, and I have it set to one, two, three, four, three. So it's off by two or three counts there. Um, but not enough to be at all concerned about. That's just, uh, and, and there's lead resistance, you see. <laughs> if I fiddle with the, uh, with the wires, I can change the value. So no worries there.